Okay, hi Booktube and welcome to the first part of Proust vlog uh, where I'm going to be going through uh, Marcel Proust's Remembrance of Things Past. I've, I've finished the first volume, I'm making progress on the second so I thought I'd just share my thoughts on each volume as I go through. Uh, so in this um, instalment I'll be talking about Swan's Way and it's my, it's my second time trying to read Swan's Way um, and I thought it'd be just interesting for me to kind of compare my, my two experiences. Um, so that the first time I tried to read it, I was spinning quite a lot of plates and I was planning a lot of things and had, yeah, there's a lot of things going on all at once. Um, and I, I suppose I, I just didn't really have the, the headspace for Proust. He does require a lot of concentration, a lot of attention. Uh, you need lots of time to mull him over whereas when I was reading him I was I just wanted to uh, get from cover to cover and be like okay yep I get it let's move on uh, whereas it's, that's not really the kind of book it is um, and so I kind of failed the book in my approach um, and so I have come to it with much more patience this time I've also got much more um, um, not sure necessarily that I have more time on my hands but I've definitely got more headspace for it so I can just read it in these little chunks and mull it over and, and sort of make connections and, and things like that. Um, and it's just this, I, I suppose the first time round I found the characters a little annoying. Uh, <laughs> I thought they were, um, yeah, they, I felt like they didn't know what they wanted and they're just running around in circles and being horrible to each other. Um, whereas this time through it's um, a, a really quite relaxing read, um, particularly as you start off with this wonderful kind of childhood reverie uh, with the narrator, uh, Marcel, telling us that he used to go to bed early and explaining how when the family have these dinner parties that his parents, after a certain point, tell him, OK, it's time for you to go to bed and, you know, it's time for the grown-ups to, to stay down here and, you know, we're going to you know, <laughs> actually have fun as adults um, and it's just I think it's a really fascinating opening with him talking about his relationship with his mother and all he really wants is for his mother to come up and give him this goodnight kiss um, and it sets up this theme um, that so far I've definitely noticed through the first volume of of desire and the, the way that the one thing that you want is at least for a certain amount of time, the one thing you can't have. Um, and you kind of become your own worst enemy in this situation um, because you're making this object of desire um, so, so important that you just get jealous and um, you know, you're know you just ruining everything for the sake of this thing you can't have. Um, and that's really emphasized in sort of the main or at least the longest section in Swan's Way, which is Swan in Love, uh, which is a sort of flashback. It's our narrator telling us this story he heard about one of his parents' friends, Monsieur Swan. Um, and so it's Swan as a, a younger man, um, and he's besotted by this young woman called Odette, who in, in the end, he has to admit, wasn't even his type, but there's just something about her. Um, and... But for, for Swan, it's, um, it's, it's a, there's a really sort of interesting double standard where, you know, he is the, the man about town at the beginning of the section and he, you know, he has a, a thing for seamstresses and <laughs> things like that. Um, and, you know, Odette is just going to be another bit on the side for him. That's, that's all he really sees it as. And then it kind of grows into something else. And as it grows into something else, um, he kind of realises or begins to see it's not necessarily the same for her, that, but for her she wants to be free to go wherever she wants um, and she's probably sleeping with other men and so his jealousy is uh, just fueled further and further um, as, as the section goes on um, and his desire is kind of goes along with his jealousy um, and it kind of becomes this um, every nice thing every lovely little encounter between him and Odette becomes another weapon in the torture chamber because he's thinking of how 
someone else might be doing the very same thing the next day. Um, and so it's, yeah, it's just a fascinating, I suppose, character study, um, uh, but also it's just building uh, this idea of, of, of desire um, and, of, and of, of jealousy as well. Um, and then, it, yeah, and then the rest of the book is Marcel's childhood memories um, and again, I think desire is, is, is a big part of it, uh, but also with it being a book called Remembrance of Things Past, it's, you know, memory has got a big thing to do with it. Um, and one of the really striking things uh, so far for me has been, it's, um, it, it's, it's almost a, a paradox um, in, in the way that something sort of might be gone, and yet when you're remembering it, it's it's there and yet because it's only a memory it's not there um, and so there's this you know sort of weird little paradox where um, things are immortal but also they're irrecoverable Ir- irrecoverable <laughs> I'm not saying that right today uh, but I hope you get what I mean um, but I thought I'd just give you um, so one of the early passages where Proust sort of introduces this theme of memory it comes uh, just before one of the famous sections with the Madeleine, uh, which is a kind of trigger for him for his his uh, boyhood uh, memories, and it kind of gets the whole narrative sort of rolling from there. And um, this is kind of what comes just before that. I feel that there is much to be said for the Celtic belief that the souls of those whom we have lost are held captive in some inferior being in an animal, in a plant, in some inanimate object, and thus effectively lost to us until the day, which to many never comes, when we happen to pass by the tree or to obtain possession of the object which forms their prison. Then they start and tremble, they call us by our name, and as soon as we have recognised their voice, the spell is broken, delivered by us, they have overcome death and return to share our life. And so it is with our own past. It is a labour in vain to attempt to recapture it. All the efforts of our intellect must must prove futile. The past is hidden somewhere outside the realm, beyond the reach of intellect, in some material object, in in the sensation which that material object will give us of which we have no inkling, and it depends on chance whether or not we may come upon this object before we ourselves must die. Um, and so, yeah, I think I'll, I'll leave it there for the, uh, for the, first, uh, for the first section, uh, the first volume of Remembrance of Things Past by Marcel Proust. It's been really good so far, and hopefully it won't be too long before I'm back again. Uh, with the second volume. Thanks for watching. I'll see you soon.